Becky Reserves, the gentlelady from New York, is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I now yield three minutes to the gentleman from the great state of New York, the distinguished chair of the Committee on the Judiciary, Mr. Jerry Nadler. The gentleman from New York is recognized. I thank the gentlelady for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to this end block amendment and particularly to the Burgess Amendment. The Burgess Amendment would strike one of the most important provisions in the bill, one that ensures that a sitting president or vice president can be held accountable for their actions, just like every other American. This provision is necessary in order to close a dangerous loophole in the law created by DOJ policy, most recently embodied in a legal opinion by the Office of Legal Counsel, which holds that a president cannot be criminally prosecuted during his or her term in office. Under current law, throughout the entire period that a president is presumed by some to be immune from prosecution, the statute of limitations continues to run on any offense he or she may have committed. Since most federal criminal offenses carry a five-year statute of limitations, a president who is not prosecuted while in office for a crime he or she may have committed could end up evading justice altogether if the statute of limitations runs out before their term is over, particularly if they are elected to a second term. Allowing complete immunity from criminal prosecution merely because of the office a person holds would make a mockery of the rule of law. It is a maxim of our system of justice that no man is immune from the law. No man can be a judge in his own case. Statutes of limitations are an important element of criminal law. As a general matter, they provide a necessary balance between protecting defendants from delay and allowing prosecutors adequate time to investigate and charge cases. But the law has also recognized that certain limited exceptions to this general rule are necessary. The case of a sitting president whose prosecution is barred under Justice Department policy fits comfortably among such exceptions. It is necessary, therefore, simply to pause the statute of limitations to ensure that the presidency is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. We must not strike this essential provision because every person, no matter his or her title or office, must be held accountable our, under our laws. I urge strong opposition to this amendment. And I want to mention one other thing. We have heard our friends across the aisle uh, talk about Donald Trump. And they say that uh, former President Trump did nothing wrong. Democrats, by and large, say he did a lot of things wrong. But that, relevant, but that is an irrelevant to this debate. The, these amendments, or this bill, rather, has nothing to do with, what pres with President Trump any more than the post-Watergate reforms had to do with Richard Nixon. Now, Richard Nixon's conduct taught us certain lessons, and Donald Trump's conduct taught us certain lessons. And the legislation before us are the result of those lessons. I yield the gentleman as much time as he may consume. I thank the gentlelady. And those lessons are for us to use to protect the future. That's what this legislation is about, to protect the future from a president who, of any party who may do some of the things who may violate the law, who may aggrandize power. That's what this is about, the future, not the past. And so when I hear our Republican friends talk about Donald Trump and talk about how he wasn't convicted, et cetera, it's irrelevant. We're talking about the future, not the past. And for the future, it is necessary to, to pass this bill. And for the future, it is necessary to defeat the Send Block Amendment. And I thank the gentlelady for yielding, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman.